Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Folks, I'm going to keep saying it every time I come on here. Jesus is coming, and Jesus is coming one day very, very, very soon. Folks, the deception is so thick right now. I had to share this one with you. Uh, the words that just came out of Pope Francis's mouth. Now, this shouldn't surprise you. Uh, this man has said a lot of things that are very troubling and very disturbing. And we have to remember what's recorded in the book of 1 John, chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now, what this man has said uh, speaks for itself, but I had to share this one with you today. Thank you to all of you that sent me this. This is recently in from LifeSite. Recent article titled, Pope Francis, Pope Francis Denies That Hell is a Place, says it is a posture towards life. Listen to this, folks. In an interview to mark his 10-year anniversary, Pope Francis appeared to deny the existence of hell, saying that it is not a place, but is simply a state of the heart and a posture towards life. As part of the in-depth discussion, Francis was asked, what is your own interpretation of hell and paradise? And what happens to people who go to hell? And what happens to those who go to paradise? Giving a trademark, lengthy, convoluted, and somewhat evasive answer, Francis appeared to deny the existence of hell as an actual place. Listen to this. Hell is not a place, he said. If one goes to attend the last judgment and sees the faces of those who go to hell, one gets scared. If you read Dante, you get scared. But these are media representations. Expanding on his answer, Francis described hell simply as a state, a description which appeared to refer as a state of mind. Hell is a state. There are people who live in hell continuously. Well, Pope Francis, that's not what my Bible says. My Bible says that heaven and hell are very real literal places and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Heaven, the most amazing, incredible place that we could even fathom. Our earthly brains can't comprehend how amazing heaven's going to be. How it is right now and how it will be forever. Hell, the most horrific place we could possibly imagine in eternity separated from God. Time doesn't permit me to speak on what the Bible says about heaven and hell, but it makes it very clear that heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and we will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. He who has the Son hath life. He who, ha he who hath not the Son of God hath not life. You know, the Pope has also said that all religions lead to the same God, which is absolutely hogwash. My Bible says in the book of John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. In Acts 4.12, we read, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And in 1 Timothy 2.5, we read, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So the Virgin Mary is not going to save you. Buddha is not going to save you. Allah is not going to save you. Muhammad is not going to save you. Dead saints are not going to save you. Religion is not going to save you. The New Age movement is not going to save you. You trying to be a good person with your own good works and earn your way to heaven, that is not going to save you. There is only one way to the kingdom of heaven and one name that can save you, and that is Jesus Christ in him alone. Now, the scary thing about this is the deception. I mean, think about all the people that follow what the Pope says and all this hogwash that is coming out of his mouth. And if you're listening to him, this junk that's coming out of his mouth. Run. Run and run to what your Bible says. The Bible tells you what you have to do to be saved and what you have to do to go to heaven and that heaven and hell are very real literal places. What do you have to do to be saved? The gospel of your salvation is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood 
on the cross at Calvary so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, he was buried, and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. So put your faith in your trust in the blood of Jesus right now. Believe he died for you. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures and do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it, Jesus is coming and he is coming one day very, very, very soon. You know, the Bible talks about in the last days, there will be a departure from the truth. There will be an apostasy. It's happening. And here you have the Pope who has, what, 2 billion plus followers? May which will bend the knee to him saying this junk? Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Go to what the Word of God says and make no mistake about it. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places. And it's my prayer that when that day comes, I see you in heaven and that you're not deceived by all this, this madness and this junk out there. God bless you all.